Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the first Sunday in Lent is Deuteronomy 26, verses 1 through 11. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And the epistle is from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And the gospel reading is from Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and all their, and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Well, Pastor Berg and I switched preaching gates, and you already had a title, but your title intrigued me. And the title for the sermon on Sunday is From Chaos to Order. And God created order in the universe, right? Before that, it was an abyss, it was void, it it was chaotic. But God created with his word, created life, he made us, and there's order to this life. And... Adam and Eve, with the fall of humanity, when they believed the lie, 
instead of the truth of God's word, uh, chaos entered in again and confusion, uh, no longer under the, the care of, of God and no longer receiving the order of his word or believing is receiving, right? No longer receiving it. So Jesus came into the world to uh, bring life back to the world uh, and the order of life, right? And we have in the temptation of our Lord an attempt by the devil to stop him. And he tempts Jesus. But to every temptation, Jesus responds with his life-giving, life-ordering word. The devil would like to confuse things, right? And I think it's kind of interesting that with the temptation that this, this all belongs to me. And I think we forget sometimes that at that point it did, right? Because Adam and Eve willingly uh, gave him that authority. He, they, they took creation under the devil's control because they believed the lie. So what did Jesus come in to do into the world to do? To take it back. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only. Uh, the devil, well, didn't meet his match in Jesus, but he met up with God, the creator of all things. And Jesus isn't going to be stopped in terms of restoring his creation, giving it life again, life as he created and redeemed it now, or which he's about to do in his death and resurrection. So the devil can't stop him. And Jesus, all the way through with every temptation, he's obedient to the word. He doesn't fall like Adam and Eve. So in his death and resurrection, he overcomes sin and death and wins for us this new life, this new order, the, uh, the harmony that God created in the beginning. So now what does the devil do? Switches strategies, right? So the strategy now is to keep us from receiving it, to keep us away from the word of God. Last night you talked about how he distracts us from fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He does that. He seeks to put everything besides Jesus in front of us. But he also seeks to keep us away from his word and wherever and whenever it is proclaimed. So, and by doing that, uh, chaos ensues. With regard to the world, what the world does uh, with words, think about that. The world empties, seeks to empty the words of meaning so that they become meaningless. And Words are the stuff that God uses to bring life, right? So he has a, an alternate reality, if you will, with regard to words, which is no reality at all. So in the world today, we call things that, um, not what they are, but whatever we dream them up to be. And that causes confusion, it causes uh, strife, it causes, um, uh, well, violence, right? And, and pits one side against another because everybody's claiming this, that, or the other. And, and you wonder who in the world to believe anymore. And even in the world of science and other disciplines, um, this idea has, has uh, been uh, has, has, has been embraced so that even in those sciences, what previously was called a disorder or something, you know, uh, someone was having a problem with something, it's no longer called a disorder. It's like, oh, if you choose to do it that way, that's great, even though it means uh, the undoing of one's person, one, a person's life who is suffering that disorder. So instead of treating the disorder, they say, well, that's good. Make sense? I don't know. That's where I'm starting out with this. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, you know, that's kind of the direction that I was thinking about, about going, uh, to, and you picked up on that beautifully. Um, this past week we had, or two weeks ago now, our Higher Things retreat, and uh, one of the sections dealt with the theology of the body, and, and Pastor Nelson, who's a pastor at St. John the Whedon, uh, picked up on this illustration. I think it's great. If you could imagine this piece of paper, just say it, it's blank, it's empty, and it's there's a picture on it, and it's the most beautiful, the beautiful thing you've ever seen in your entire life, right? Um, that's the way it was in the Garden of Eden when God created everything orderly and beautiful and, and uh, pristine. And, uh, and then the devil comes along and tempts them and they fall into that temptation. And the whole thing is, is just made into 
into chaos, right? And the devil puts it down and it's, it's stopped. And, and, and that's what we have, complete disorder now um, because of sin. And uh, Jesus, the perfect one, then enters into that, that garden or that wilderness, so to speak, and he tries the same tactics on him. But now he's come, to, as you said, now he meets God. Mm-hmm. And uh, and what Jesus comes to do is to is to bring that back to order with the Word of God, right? This is not I mean, Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is perfect, but it brings it back into order. Um, and I, I, we can't help but talk about Ukraine right now. And you see the the pictures on on the television screen, just the complete and utter destruction and chaos that this evil brings that's what it does to our lives sin totally distorts it and 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 brings it into that chaotic thing and then we focus on it and uh, again jesus would have us draw our eyes to him uh, because he's defeated this he brings chaos back into order and and that's the kind of direction i was thinking about going with and you picked up on that well now what's interesting though too is the epistle lesson right uh, the, the antidote to this disorder, uh, God brings to us by his spirit at work through his word. And the word is near you. It's mm-hmm. in your mouth. It is in your heart. We can but, tap into it. Yeah. And if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And notice this word is made flesh. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, and, and notice what we receive in the Lord's Supper. The word is near you. Back to his flesh and blood is near you. It's in your mouth, in, in your heart, yeah. and, and 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 notice so that the devil's dealing with not with us; he's dealing with God. So we have access to this word, and this word transforms us. And think about this too: we gather in the the name of the Lord, right? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then what do we do? We confess our sin. We confess our confusion. Mm-hmm. We confess that we've totally messed everything up that He has created. And what does God do? He forgives us and he puts us back together with God and with each other through the forgiveness of sins. And there's an order of service, right? Mm-hmm. It's the order of the service of God who brings us back to uh, into harmony with him and one another. Yeah. There's lots of hymns that do things like, I mean, that, mm-hmm. that confess that, right? Yeah. And I don't know if you want to pick up on I want to throw something at you, yeah. Sam, because, um, and, and you can help me out with this because you're the, you're the confort. So one of the hymns was um, A Mighty Fortress, right? And the one that we're going to sing on Sunday is, is very orderly. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that? The, I'm like, you know, the sure. different... Yeah, we have, in our hymnal, we have two, two melodies um, to A Mighty Fortress. Uh, the, the original by Martin Luther is A Mighty Fortress is our God. Bum, 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 bum. Just very it's kind jazzy, of, yeah, you might it's like kind to say. Of, yeah, syncopated which is syncopated and, and you know, uh, fun to sing. And then um, over time, it, the the rhythm sort of got ironed out into more metrical um, order. It, yeah, well, yeah, so yeah, and so um, you know, we get a mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. So um, there are two options for us to sing, um, and I think we're going to sing that second one. One uh, one idea is uh, the reason why it it got changed was that as people sang um, the original over time uh, without maybe without accompaniment um, when you have mm-hmm. lots of people singing you know it gets kind of slow and you sometimes you can't maintain uh, the rhythm and so it, it may have gotten evened out as as people sang it and then they they just started to, to write it down that way that's just one thought um, and uh, of course, the version that we're going to sing on Sunday, we're going to sing the evened out one with the, an arrangement by J.S. Bach. That's the one that the one that they sang at his time. Um, and the words so it is a little different. bit more orderly, so to speak. I mean, uh, if you want to say, talk, right. I mean, I'm just yeah, kind of, yeah. kind uh-huh. of painting with the yeah. more, what we're talking about. More here. measured, but even yeah. with music, I mean, you never hit a wrong note because you're you're good at right. Your craft. Uh, okay, <laughs> but I'll let you believe that. But, well. <laughs> But notice when that happens, right? That you can, that it 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 ruins the order. It ruins mm-hmm. the, um, and and you think about music and the harmony mm-hmm. and, and all of those things that you know people are singing together in a way in an order, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that it it 
and the order is beautiful. The, yeah. When it's not orderly, it's yeah, it, a jumble it, of notes. A jumble yeah, of yeah, notes yeah. doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. and it, it's just chaotic. Good it's con yeah, it, it it's not it's unpleasant to the ears. Right. Yeah. Yes. So I think that goes with that too. Yeah. 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 That harmony. Mm -hmm. That har Yeah. You know, and it's interesting how the early church, uh, the early church fathers, um, and even in Paul's letters, he talks about living in harmony with one another. He uses that that word, mm -hmm. um, sort of that, that allusion to music of, of you know walking together in tandem with one another. And um, well, we use that even in our church body. We talk about concordia, mm -hmm. you know, with, with with one heart, with one voice, or, or synod means walking mm -hmm. together, right, mm -hmm. in unity and harmony. So in the hymnal, we have notes to follow, right? So if everybody were singing different notes, it would be confusing. Oh, okay. We could try it and see what sounds well, like. It would be confusing. But but notice that there's there's we're given the notes. We don't choose the notes for ourselves. Everybody choose whatever note yeah. we want to do. Mm -hmm. We're given the notes in the same way. We live according to the word of God. We're given life through that word. And um, we're given... The mind of Christ through that word, so we we think alike, we we mm -hmm. we speak mm -hmm. in harmony with one another, and I mean, there's, but it comes from God to us. Mm -hmm. it, it's not located in, mm -hmm. in all of us, so that we all do our own thing. But that's the world's way, and mm -hmm. we're killing each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. From your sermon, <laughs> yeah. yeah, curved in on ourselves instead of being brought beyond ourselves in faith toward God and and be um, have that that ordered life, and that's what God gives, especially in worship. So that's why, you know, it, um, it's important to be here. We have a liturgy. We have a liturgy, mm -hmm. a liturgy of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Good should we sing? Yes. Uh, in the hymnal 424 is, O Christ, you walked the road, talking about mm -hmm. um, the temptation of Jesus and, um, and how that relates to us. O Christ, you walked the road, our wandering feet mm -hmm. must go. You faced with us temptation's power and fought our ancient foe. Um, we think of the Hebrews passage where uh, Jesus was tempted in every way uh, that we are, uh, yet he was without sin. And looking at, especially at verse 2, talking about uh, the bread Jesus, uh, the devil was trying to get him to make bread um, out of stones. No bread of earth alone can fill our hungry hearts. Lord, help us seek your living word, the food your grace imparts, the word being the food that we mm -hmm. uh, partake of each, each Lord's Day. And now during Lent on Wednesday nights at 6.30, uh, shall we sing maybe the first two verses? Mm -hmm. Sure. That makes sense. O Christ, you walk the road, our wandering feet must go. You faced with us temptation's power and fought our ancient foe. No bread of earth alone can fill our hungering hearts. Lord, help us seek your living word, the food your grace imparts. Well, thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.